Okay, so welcome back everyone. And this is the exciting part. This is the special guest we have, Graham Wynn. So, second, yeah, welcome him up. We want to get to know you, a bit of introduction on what you currently do at mm -hmm. the moment. I started a recruitment agency probably about 10 years ago um, called Superior People Recruitment. The purpose behind it was to try and make a bit of a difference. I'd been to recruitment agencies myself. I'd used them in companies I'd worked for in the past, and I, I didn't think it worked as well as it could. So I thought I want to try and make it a little bit different and do things differently. So the whole process I went through was to go to some recruitment agencies, try and understand how they worked and how they operated, and find was there a better way to do it. What I focused on through the whole process is to try and understand from an employer what they're looking for in a type of person. It isn't just the skills, it's not just the experience, it's a cultural fit. It's an environment they have which someone has to fit into. It's a little bit like, I suppose, a dating agency. I've understood the client, what they're looking for, and I'm now trying to find the person who fits best for them. That's what I do now, and that's what I've been doing for the last 10 years or so. How were you feeling when you had to do stuff that was very, very basic, essentially? The initial thing you think of is humiliating. That's the initial thing that comes to mind, but I quickly pushed that on one side. So I suppose it was ego that made me think, no, I will prove I can do this. And so I got past the humiliation because that wasn't going to help me. I had to be determined to say, I can make this work. This is what I've chosen to do. I have to make this work. And I will do whatever I have to do to make this work. And as I say, I went overboard, I worked crazy hours, I worked at home, I traveled long distances, public transport, walking. I much more wouldn't walk through our dear at five o'clock in the morning these days, but in those days it was, I thought it was safe, but I probably didn't know any better. You have to do what you have to do, and you go outside the boundaries of what an employer is looking for. Don't think, that is just my job. What other value can you add to that employer? And once you can show that, then your value to them suddenly increases. And they have to think, we can't afford to lose you. That's the mindset you need to create in their mind. They cannot afford to lose you. And I was literally marketing myself to anybody who would listen because I knew I could do more and I just needed that opportunity. And there was no point in applying for jobs because generally speaking, that senior level role isn't advertised. You get it through word of mouth or people you know you, or headhunted or whatever. You don't often see a very senior role advertised. So I needed to network myself and that's what I did. And I, th what you're doing tonight is, is part of that. You need to get out there and talk to as many people as possible, the right kind of people and just tell them how good you are and people will eventually listen. And if you can back it up with evidence, and evidence is really important, back it up with evidence of what you've done, then they will eventually come to the right people and say, well, you're what we're needing, or I know somebody who needs you. That's how it worked. And that's how I got to that stage of being a GM. You said you talked about investing in the right people. Yep. So what does the right people, the right talent look like to you? It's different every time. And that's what I have to do. So the right person looks different every time for every different employer. But my job is to go, and unfortunately a lot of my, not to downtrod my competitors, but a lot of the, my competitors do this over a phone. They will talk to an employer over a phone, what do you want? I won't do that. I'll talk over the phone, but I won't start recruiting until I go and meet them. Doesn't matter where they are, I will go and see them because I need that information to help me find the right person. Once I find the right, what they're looking for, then we find the fit. And as I say, nine times out of 10, skills and experience, they're irrelevant. Just not, they just don't matter. In some cases it does matter, but generally speaking, it's a cultural fit. That's what we're looking for. Some really great advice there. Would you all agree? Yeah, so it's all, yeah. Great advice.